when we are writing assignment statements, we get to choose the name of our variables. And I want to let you know that certain variable names are considered good and certain variable names are considered very bad or very poor. And some are in fact illegal. You're not allowed to use certain variable names. So let me give you some examples. Let us say I have a variable n and now because I want to do some calculation with n, I want to calculate twice of n. So a good name is twice underscore n. I'm using the readable word twice and I'm using underscore to sort of separate things. I cannot use a space inside the name of a variable. So if I want to name, if I want to use uh, two terms as part of the name of the variable, I should use an underscore to indicate the separation. Now it's illegal to use operators like star. I cannot have a variable named n times 2. Similarly, I cannot start the name of a Python variable with a digit. So 2 underscore n is actually illegal. Here is another example. Let's say I'm calculating some total. So I should probably use a variable name like total. I could use the variable name sum. It's not illegal, but it's a bad name because it turns out sum is a built-in Python function. And if you name your own variable sum, then you won't be able to use the built-in Python function. So avoid such names. In your IDE, if you use such names, you will often see a little squiggly line below such names, which is, which is warning you that that is a poor choice of names. In a later lecture, we will start our exploration of functions in Python. And we will see that when a function is ready to produce an answer, it will return that answer. So we will often talk about the value that is being returned by a function. We will call that the return value. So a good variable name is return underscore value. An illegal name is return because it turns out return is a special word in Python, what we call a keyword. And you cannot name your variables with keywords. We will see that there is a small number of Python keywords and none of those are legal variable names. Now instead of typing return value, you might want to call it something like retval. And many other programming languages have this style of naming variables. They use what we call camel case. It looks like the back of a camel. There's a capital, then there's a small, then there's a capital, then there's a small. This camel case is used to indicate the different parts of the name, just like we use the underscore. And this is not illegal in Python. You are perfectly allowed to use such variable names. But in Python, the convention or the standard that most programmers use is variables usually do not have uppercase letters. And Python programmers prefer to use underscore to separate the words. Again, this is merely a convention, but we encourage you to actually follow this convention because then your code will be easier for other Python programmers to read and you will find it easier to read their code because your eye is expecting to see variable names like this and is not expecting to see such variable names. So do consider following this convention. As a last example and perhaps the most important one, imagine you are writing some program that has to deal with temperature. So a good variable name is temperature. A perfectly legal variable name is T. And you might say, well, why is that a bad name? I mean, I've written this code. I know that T means temperature in my code. And I've seen, for example, lots of physics books that use T as the symbol for temperature. So what's the problem? Well, I totally agree with you that you know what T means in your code. I can believe that. The problem is that you know what T means today and others who read your code may not know what T means. Now, 
who exactly are these others? Well, many of you are learning programming because in the future you are going to work with colleagues and so your colleagues are going to be people who will read your code. These others can include you yourself in the future. When you come back in six months, you will look at your code and scratch your head and say, what did T mean exactly over here? It may not be clear to you if you use variable names like this. On the other hand, if you use temperature, it's immediately clear that you're referring to a temperature. And then the third type of other that you must be aware of is your own generative AI. If your generative AI sees that you are using a variable named temperature, it's going to anticipate what you're trying to do and it will be able to make much better suggestions and produce better quality code using good variable names. You will see that it itself will suggest good quality variable names if you start by giving it good quality variable names. So please keep these points in mind. Choose your variable names wisely. It will help you and it will help others.